Hey everyone, this is Brittany from ArtyHopes.com. In this video, I'm going to go over some board question reviews, and it's primarily focused on pharmacology and anesthetic questions. So it's going to kind of be broken up into three parts. The first part being the actual questions with 30 seconds to answer, the second part being the explanation after each question is asked, and the third part being an in-depth breakdown of how to calculate maximum dosage for local anesthesia. So make sure you stick around to the end. All right, let's get to it. The answer is C, to reduce blood flow to the site. Epinephrine has multiple advantages when added to a local anesthetic, some being keeping the local anesthetic concentrated at the site of injection, and this helps to prolong the duration of the local anesthetic, and it helps to prevent or delay systemic absorption. It does this by reducing capillary size in the injection site, so it reduces blood flow to that area. A is wrong because although you may think of epinephrine being in an EpiPen, it is not incorporated into local anesthetics for its ability to help with allergies. B is wrong because we do not want the delay or to delay any onset of the local anesthetic. We need them to start working rapidly. D is wrong because it actually delays systemic absorption. It does not increase it. The answer is B, aspirin. For this question, all we need to remember is that aspirin will cause any platelet exposed to it never to be able to clot or aggregate again for its duration of its life expectancy, which is about 7 to 10 days. On the other hand, ibuprofen reduces blood clotting, but this is reversible, so the platelet can aggregate after being exposed to ibuprofen. The answer is D, both A and C. I made this one a little bit tricky. You need to know two things. One, that warfarin and coumadin are the same thing. Two, that ibuprofen and aspirin, as noted in the previous question, work with the platelets and stop them from forming clots. Warfarin works to stop certain clotting factors that depend on vitamin K to be formed, so warfarin does not work with the platelets. The answer is C, Dilantin. Dilantin is a pretty important drug to know in the dental field since it causes oral side effects in about 50% of treated patients. You're given a lot of clues in this question, so being able to recognize some of these clues and be able to associate it with Dilantin will be very beneficial. To summarize some of the other drugs listed, Keppra is used to treat tonic-clonic seizures and can cause behavioral changes. Phenobarbital is a barbiturate also used to treat seizures and causes CNS sedation. 
Tegretol is used for seizures, nerve pain, and bipolar disorder. It has a rare side effect of precipitating Steven Johnson syndrome. The answer is D, both A and B. It is important that we know both how many milliliters are in the carpule and how many milligrams of drug are in the carpule because we need to multiply these two numbers in order to find out how many milligrams are in that carpule itself. Depending on the manufacturer, the carpule can have 1.7 milliliters or 1.8 milliliters. However, when we find the milligrams of the drug that there is in one carpule, we need to remember that 2% of drug is going to equal 2 milligrams per milliliter. 3% is going to equal 3 milligrams per milliliter. And this is true with every number, 4 being 4 milligrams per milliliter. But there's not just 1 milliliter in a carpule, there's 1.8. So it's important that we know both pieces of information so that we can multiply them and get the total milligram of drug in that one carpule. The answer is B. Both statements are false. Potency and efficacy are often confused, but not related. Efficacy is not dose-related either. Potency is the amount of drug needed to produce its effect. So if you can feel your maximum effect with just a little bit of drug, that's considered a potent drug. However, efficacy is just the ability of that drug to produce its effect and has nothing to do with how much or how little is given. The answer is C6. To answer this question, you need to do some math. One carpule is 36 milligrams of lidocaine. Our patient can only have 220 milligrams of drug. So if we divide the 220 by 36, we get 6, and there is a remainder, but we can only have 6 full carpules given to this patient safely. The answer is C, steroids. Long-term steroid use can precipitate Cushing's disease-like symptoms, which is the overproduction of steroids, and includes moon phase, weight gain, buffalo hump, delayed wound healing, muscle wasting, and more. The other drugs listed in this question do have long-term effects, but they are unlike these associated with steroid use.
The answer is A. Both statements are true. Bisphosphonates are very important to know as a hygienist or dental professional. Medical or primary doctors will often have their patients inquire with their dental professionals before starting this therapy. The drugs are usually used to help reduce risk of bone fracture in patients with osteoporosis. These drugs are thought to cause trauma to dental alveolar structures by limiting their capacity to heal. Some structures can become non-vital and exposed through normal mucosa tissues. This event is called BRONJ or bisphosphonate related osteonecrosis of the jaw. The answer is C. Drugs in the blood plasma will not be eliminated, leading to risk of toxicity. The P450 enzymes help metabolize and eliminate drugs from the blood plasma. If their actions are being decreased, we run the risk of drugs still remaining in the blood plasma and to build potentially reaching toxic levels. To give a summary on some of the other answers, A is not right because the lack of P450 enzyme or the reduction of it doesn't mean that the drug will not have an effect. It means that the drug will not be able to be eliminated properly. B is wrong because the drug will be available in the blood for use. D is wrong because the P450 enzyme does not have to do with allergic reactions. To calculate maximum anesthetic dosage in a question, you usually need some information, and this information will be given to you either in a case study or the question itself. Most of this stuff you don't need to remember and will be part of the question. So the three things you're really going to need is the patient's weight, which if you're getting, given a case study, you'll be able to see that in their medical history or somewhere in the chart. The MRD of the drug, which is usually a chart given from either the Malamed book or a recommended dosage, will be given to you as well. And then the percentage of drug in the carpule is another piece of information that you're going to need, but you will know this because it's pretty easy. So the percentage of drug in a carpule, whether it's 2% lidocaine, 3% lidocaine, 4% lidocaine, the percentage is out of 100. So it's just a matter of reduction. So the 2% lidocaine is always going to mean that 2 milligrams of drug are in 1 milliliter of solution. 3% will always be 3 milligrams and so on. So step one is going to be to find out how many grams of lidocaine there is in one carpule. So we have to remember that one carpule is not just one milliliter of solution, so there's not going to be 20 milligrams in this carpule. It's 1.8 milliliters of solution. It could be 1.7, but usually 1.8, and the problem would tell you if it is otherwise. So once we have that piece of information, we just really need to find out how many milligrams of lidocaine are in this carpule. So we're going to multiply 20 by 1.8, and that's going to give you 36 milligrams of lidocaine in one carpule. So what do we do that with that information? Well, step two, knowing the MRD, the maximum recommended dose is important, and again, that'll be given to you. So in this case, the MRD is two milligrams per pound that the person weighs, and we know the, the person is 110 pounds. So altogether, that's 220 total milligrams of lidocaine that this patient can have. Step three is going to be to find out how many carpules is 220 milligrams of lidocaine. So we know that each carpule is 36 milligrams of lidocaine. We know our patient's maximum dose is 220. So if we divide 220 by 36, we get six carpules. We actually get six carpules point something. There is a remainder, but that remainder does not mean that our patient can have seven carpules because that would be going over the maximum. So we round down to six. Our patient can have six carpules. 
Alright guys, so depending how well this video does, if people do like the explanations and do like the questions, I can do more videos like this. I can do videos where I'm just reading the questions and the answers as well so that they don't have to be as slow as this video goes. You can up the timer on your videos to watch this faster, but please give me some feedback so that I can know what to do better for next time. But please share this video, give it a thumbs up, and make sure to come back for future videos by subscribing. And as always, there is tons of study information on rdhopes.com and my Instagram, which my handle is at rdhopes with a one, a number one, at the end. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.